Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we are going to be looking at this 2008 Honda Civic. I'm going to be showing you the emissions locations on this vehicle. First, what is on it? We have a three-way catalytic converter and a air fuel ratio sensor, which is your bank one, center one, pretty much oxygen sensor. I'll show you that momentarily. A heated oxygen sensor, which is your rear oxygen sensor that monitors the cat. And an EGR valve, the exhaust gas recirculation valve. That last one right there just pretty much means that you have uh, fuel injection on your vehicle. So we're not going to worry about that one too much either. Right here on top of the motor between the firewall and the engine at the end of this hose, you're going to have the PCV valve. The PCV valve is pretty important on your vehicle. It's super often overlooked. Uh, and this one's really easy to access. If you have the proper tools, getting that hose off should be pretty easy. Dropping a deep socket down uh, into the hole to the PCV valve doesn't look too hard too. Again, PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation. This valve allows blow-by from the engine to return into the intake system to be burnt through the combustion process, hopefully and through the catalytic converter and cleaned up uh, and burnt out the tailpipe. It's positive crankcase ventilation, like I said before, super important. Uh, look for a link in the description below if you need one. Next, I'm gonna be showing you the vapor canister purge solenoid. This solenoid is responsible for allowing vapors built up in the emission system to return into or to be inserted into the intake system and again burnt through the combustion process out the tailpipe through the catalytic converter and cleaned up going out the tailpipe. So that is the EVAP solenoid allowing uh, your vapors to go into the engine. Your other one will be the vent solenoid shown in a little bit. This is your EGR valve, exhaust gas recirculation valve. This allows burnt exhaust to go back into the engine to dilute the air uh, and cleans up the air a little bit gives you a little bit more efficiency but robs a little bit of power do your own research on that one i will list in the description below uh, codes that will be caused by these problems or parts going bad this is your bank one sensor one or your air fuel ratio sensor that was shown on your underhood label so this is your air fuel ratio sensor bank one sensor one that one tells the computer how much fuel to give or take away from uh, the engine to keep your engine running perfect, hopefully at 14.7 to 1 uh, lambda. Your catalytic converter is between these two sensors right here, your air fuel ratio sensor up top and your bank one sensor to heated oxygen sensor right here at the bottom. This oxygen sensor is responsible for measuring the efficiency of the catalytic converter and that's it. It should not affect your drivability if it goes bad. If a, you get a P0420 or something like that, uh, and you got over 100,000 miles, you might want to replace both the CAT and that rear oxygen sensor. Coming to the back of the vehicle, more towards the center, I should say, of the vehicle, you're going to have your vapor canister. This stores your vapors in this canister and allows them to escape into the atmosphere when possible or back up to the engine into the intake system. I don't usually see these go bad. If you do have one that's bad, you're usually going to see a visual leak around it, something that's wet, or they're just going to leak. Uh, I don't, I've never seen one that looks visually fine and was bad. Moving on will be your emissions vapor vent solenoid. This solenoid is responsible for allowing vapors to release into the atmosphere. So if you're having a fuel pump pumping issue, this might be your problem. The vapor vent solenoid allows the vapors to be released into the atmosphere while you are pumping gas or when it needs to be released so you don't have an overpressure condition and it can't go through the purge solenoid up on the engine. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you comment below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. I should have links in the description below for parts and tools needed to remove these and codes that are going to be caused by these. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next hopefully helpful video.